This episode of Terrible Riding Advice is brought to you by Raycon. Every author experiences the call to adventure. Yet writing can be a perilous journey for writer and characters alike. In the long quest, every protagonist could use a mentor to help guide them through the many dangers before them. But how to write a good mentor character? Let terrible writing advice guide the aspiring writer on their own journey to write a mentor character. Now, when it comes to writing mentors, the best bet is to not get too attached. We all know that the mentor is killed off to advance the protagonist. Wait, if I'm mentoring you, then... Oh, crap. Um, you know, let's just save that one for later. Uh, uh, crap, crap, crap. Okay, JP, don't panic. We just need to pad out this video to avoid being killed off to advance the viewer's writing quest while also establishing narrative stakes. Okay, let's see. Uh, what non-death tropes can we cover about a mentor? Well, why does the story have a mentor in the first place? Why the mentor's main function, which is most definitely not dying off in order to advance the protagonist's character development, is actually to dispense exposition to the protagonist and thus to the audience by proxy. Just have the mentor sit the protagonist down and ramble on and on about world history, the magic system, the current geopolitical situation, the Dark Lord's backstory, the prophecy, how I'm not padding this video out in order to avoid my own mentor death, and local celebrity gossip. So far, the mentor's only defining characterization is a chapter-long info dump. Perfect! Might as well get all that pesky exposition out of the way in one boring clump. Man, I am so smart. Is any of this exposition filtered through the mentor's perspective in order to establish their character? Of course! My mentor is a boring, dry academic, so naturally his teachings sound like a humanities lecture, drowning in antidepressants and tenured-induced apathy. Yes, I could use even this as characterization by having the other characters zone out during the info dumps or having another character interrupt the mentor with a far faster summary, thus adding character conflict. But then I would have to give my characters some actual traits and it might distract the audience from my very important world building backstory. Besides, I'm not going to bother giving my mentor any characterization. He's just going to d Oh man, I almost forgot. We need to establish what our mentor looks like. And by that, I mean pick a stock mentor off the shelf. If the story is a fantasy setting, then the mentor has very high odds of being the party's wizard. Regardless of the genre, the mentor is usually old and wise in spite of dispensing zero actual wisdom throughout the story. Well, almost. The mentor makes a great mouthpiece for the author's personal philosophy and very important opinions. Regardless, our mentor will be grouchy too because old people only have one emotion. Sometimes our mentor is an old grizzled veteran who could tell you some stories they could, but won't because we have to save those for the expanded universe prequels. The mentor has a long and storied past. You know because the other characters refer to it constantly in the most vague so I don't have to flesh a backstory out way possible. In spite of overwhelming emotional baggage and a lifetime of adventure to leave a mark on the world, the number of times the characters actually encounter an element of the mentor's past is exactly zero. I'm not going to waste time on the mentor when I have a protagonist to develop. Just like the mentor's mysterious connection to the villain, which will be explored never. I mean, why would we when the mentor has the grim specter of um, the love triangle hanging over them? Yes, the good old love triangle. I am most definitely not using that running gag in order to pad out the video in order to avoid my own mentor death. Yes, put the mentor into a love triangle. Why not? Have the mentor be happily married and have the pair both participate in the training? Ugh, a healthy relationship? No, we want all of our mentor's past relationships to be tragic mistakes. Our protagonist needs a positive role model after all. In fact, come to think of it, why does our mentor even want to train the protagonist when his last pupil turned evil? Does our protagonist do anything noteworthy to convince the mentor that they are worthy of mentoring? Ha! Who needs a resume when you have a prophecy? The mentor has to train the protagonist no matter how much of a snot he is because the prophecy says so. The protagonist can't be bothered to overcome the mentor's emotional baggage because that might force me to actually develop the mentor character past the extremely broad archetype I slapped into the story with zero modification or thought. 
treat the mentor like a real character and actually have the mentor interact with the rest of the cast and form relationships outside of the protagonist. Even worse, have the mentor teach someone else on the side. Don't be so selfish there, mentor. The mentor's only function is to teach the protagonist how awesome they are, not have actual goals and aspirations of their own. I can't give the mentor a spot in the story to shine because it might take away from the protagonist's thunder. All the other characters exist solely to prop up how awesome and always right the protagonist is. Having the mentor be awesome, especially in the early story to serve as a preview of the protagonist's potential, as well as show off the array of powers and skills the protagonist can inherit, would simply add the unreasonable expectation that the protagonist has to actually earn their amazing powers rather than the author just handing everything to them on a silver platter complete with a complimentary love interest. Magic that can level a city block? I can't see how that would require extensive training and mastery to use with care. I am sure the mentor will just be A-OK -okay with the teen wielding godlike powers of destruction with only limited instruction. And by instruction, I mean cheerleading. I'm not having the mentor actually teach a practical skill when I can have them spout vague platitudes and dry exposition. Developing an actual training arc would be like way too hard. Training in real-world martial art forms is as detailed as it is full of story opportunities, and adapting that to a fictional setting requires way too much creativity. Use a brief glimpse into the protagonist's training routine to establish world-building details, expand on characterization, and allow the audience to grow familiar with the rules of the setting's power systems or technologies? I have a far better idea. Let's just skip all that and get straight to the power fantasy. See? Now we don't even need the mentor anymore, so now the story can kill him off and, um... Oh, come on, there's got to be more. Crap, I'm out of script. I'll just have to improvise. Uh, mentors! Yeah! Just, like, make sure your mentor gives the protagonist, like, bad advice or something? God forbid the mentor have a freaking coherent, thought-out worldview. Did I mention the vague platitudes yet? I think I did. Okay, uh, uh, surely there's more cliches I'm missing. Look, plot, you can't kill me. I still haven't finished teaching the audience every cliche about the mentor yet. You are too late, JP. I have arrived to stop the prophecy, but I must kill you first before the prophesied audience watcher can put a stop to my coming dark reign. Oh no, avenge me, random internet person watching this video. Also, when I die, don't forget to yell, no! <laughs> oh, right, I forgot. If the mentor dies before passing everything on to the protagonist, then just bring them back as a ghost. Because not even death can stop the mentor from coming back and explaining the heavy handed symbolism. Knights of Artistic Integrity to battle! Be gone, vile hand, or else face the infinite wrath of a second stern warning. Newsletter. That fiend, he just signed me up for the newsletter. I wish to unsubscribe. Quick, squire, take out the beast with a second stern warning before it spams us with even more ads. What was that? I couldn't hear you over my sweet Raycons. Okay, Squire, I know you're new here, but we don't do that. The Knights of Artistic Integrity will never take brand deals. But these awesome everyday E25 Raycon earbuds are great from working from home at the gym or use their noise-isolating fit to block out the inane prattle of those stupid reptoids who keep whining about not having enough corpses to eat so they can keep shape-shifting. I mean, seriously. Seriously, can't they just install a back room in a crematorium or something? Besides, Raycons have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and they have a pretty sleek set of colors and design like this. Um, please excuse the poor model wearing the earbuds. 80s hair JP is all we could get. TWA fans can go to buyraycon.com slash terrible writing advice or click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order brought to you by Raycon. Oh no, your shilling has made it even more powerful. Then hold the line until my check clears. Excellent. With the nights of artistic poverty to act as a distraction, I can make my escape all, all according, according to plan. plan. Hey!